I would ask you about your upcoming uh, NATO summit in Vilnius. From your point of view, what Ukraine uh, could expect to get, uh, which uh, results for Ukraine we could all expect to see after Vilnius? So, Tali, I think there is an ongoing conversation, a discussion, a debate, uh, maybe even an argument um, within NATO um, about exactly what to say at Vilnius. Um, exactly how to answer your question. That is, what can what can NATO um, offer to Ukraine um, about membership um, and about security guarantees? Um, and I am sure that there is a vigorous discussion, both in Brussels and also in NATO member capitals. So in Washington and in Berlin and in London and in Paris right? and in Warsaw. Um, and then Vilnius. I'm sure that there is an active conversation, discussion, even argument about exactly that question. And the, a final decision has not yet been made, I don't think. Um, and it's possible that a final agreement uh, by all 31, or maybe even 32, if Sweden joins uh, by then, all the members of NATO, if they all agree, it might that agreement might not happen until just before the meeting in Vilnius. I know that there are people, you know, we all know that there are people and nations who are arguing that Ukraine has earned the right to be a member of NATO. Um, and that, uh, that, that this is where Ukraine will end up uh, in NATO. Uh, the question of course is when. Um, there seems to be a general agreement that actual membership um, will not happen while an active war is going on. But after, after the victory, um, then um, th many are arguing that Ukraine would be a great asset for NATO, provide a lot of capabilities for NATO, and Ukraine ought to be offered membership after the victory. Uh, so that debate is going on. Um, I imagine it will go on up until just before the Vilnius summit. Mm -hmm. uh, I have heard a lot uh, about uh, Israel model for Ukraine, which could be provided during this summit. I know that you have profound experience of working in Middle East region. You was involved in the process of negotiation in uh, in this conflict, uh, Arab Israel. What do you think about this? idea is it real and could which country could be guarantors of this agreement possible possible this possible agreement if it possible of course yes this possible agreement the, so i think the the israel model where the united states uh, provides israel um, on a regular predictable basis reliable basis the ability to obtain top of the line weapons, the most advanced weapons in order for Israel to be able to defend itself. There's not a treaty uh, between the United States um, and Israel that sets this out. It's a commitment. Um, and that kind of commitment to Ukraine, to allow Ukraine to obtain and maintain top of the line weapons from the United States and other NATO nations um, is is possible. I think that is possible. I don't think it's a substitute for NATO membership. I think NATO membership is clearly the goal. Um, it's the goal for NATO members right now. Again, the question is when. Um, and it's also obviously a goal for for Ukraine. So NATO membership, I think, should may, be main should 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 keep the goal. Should continue to be the goal. Um, but in the meantime, while while there is discussion um, about NATO membership, then NATO nations led by the United States ought to provide Ukraine with the weapons needed to be sure that the Russians don't invade again. Uh, we should provide the weapons as we're doing now, exactly as we're doing now. We should do that on a reliable, consistent, <clears throat> long-term basis, uh, provide Ukraine with the weapons to deter another attack from Russia, 
and defend itself um, from another attack. So that that's, again, that's what we have um, uh, with Israel. Um, we're providing right now, now Ukraine with more money uh, for weapons than we provide the Israelis. Um, so this is, we're doing this now, and we ought to continue to do this until Ukraine gets into NATO.